Hello, and welcome to my review of Assassin's Creed 3. After two games further exploring the story of Ezio, the Assassin's Creed series finally gets its next numbered sequel and the conclusions to its trilogy, Assassin's Creed 3. Taking place during the American Revolution, AC3 is touted as the biggest game in the series to date, and taking place on a whole new continent seems to promise the innovation and change the series needed after going a bit stagnant with Ezio. I can confirm now that AC3 is indeed the biggest game in the series. Find out to see if it's also the best. Assassin's Creed 3 sets out to conclude Desmond Miles' storyline, and does so by having him finally get to the location of the MacGuffin he's been searching for over the entire series' existence, only to find out that he and his married group of assassins don't have the key. In order to find out where this key is, Desmond must relive the memories of his ancestors, primarily Connor Kenway. Connor, a half-Native American, half-English assassin living in colonial America, during the not-then-country's fight for freedom, vows to protect his people from and get his revenge on the Templars, who wish to take over the New World. Connor will also have to choose sides between the Loyalists and the Patriots in the war, knowing that neither has his people's best interests at heart. Unfortunately for the game, Connor isn't that great of a main protagonist. His problem is that he doesn't seem to go through any sort of growth or arc. When we meet him, he's naive and rash and idealistic. And when we leave him, he's still all of those things. Another big fault with the game is that its first act is entirely way too long. For one thing, you don't even start the game as Connor. Instead, the first three chapters are played as some guy named Hatham, who's cool in his own right, but isn't allowed the full Assassin's Creed experience. It then takes another two chapters for Connor to grow from a boy to a man and earn his Assassin's robes, and only then does the game open up in full. The game is still fun for those early chapters, and it's completely worth it to play up to the point where the full game is unlocked, but until you get to that point, it's hard not to feel as if the game is keeping something from you and limiting how much fun it's allowing you to have with it. However, once the game does open up, the Colonial Northeast becomes the biggest playground of the series to date. Through the game, you, as Desmond, as Connor, will leap, climb, and kill through Boston and New York, as well as open the frontier, where buildings are replaced with trees and you have to worry more about bears than redcoats. At that point, the Assassin's Creed gameplay we've grown to love blossoms, and you'll be put right back into the swing of breaking into places you're not supposed to be and stabbing people who would much rather remain unstabbed. Free running and climbing has been streamlined to just one button as opposed to two in the previous games, and this simple change means that you won't be unintentionally jumping off things anywhere near as much as usual, which is nice. Connor also has the ability to climb trees and rock faces, which present new types of climbing patterns to figure out. This game overall, though, isn't as tall as the others in the series, and you won't be climbing up and jumping off many landmarks as usual. It's a small thing to notice, but the game is missing the thrill once used to get by jumping off a 500-foot building into a haystack. This game has an increased emphasis on combat, and Connor is more of a brutal fighter than any assassin we've been introduced to so far. While combat is still largely won with counters, Connor is more keen to go in for a kill with his tomahawk or sword. Connor can also kill while free running and not lose a step, and has a different weapon set, including the rope dart, which allows him to snag a target from a perch like Scorpion for Mortal Kombat and hang him on the spot. Along with the increased capability for combat, Assassin's Creed 3 also makes it easier and gives you incentives to stay stealthy. Trees and cliffs gives new ways to break into places without being seen, and bushes make it easier to stay hidden. However, the tension of stealth is kind of ruined once you realize that, even if caught, you can easily kill anyone in your way. Still, the option is there if you want it, and completing an assassination without being seen is incredibly satisfying if you can pull it off. Assassin's Creed 3 also introduces sailing to the series, and though it's kind of out of left field gameplay-wise, it is an utterly fantastic addition to the series. When sailing your boat, the Aquila, you really feel the weight of the ship turn under you, and sinking an enemy ship with a barrage of cannon fire is just as, if not more so, satisfying than an assassination. As I've said, Assassin's Creed 3 is a huge game, and a long one at that, taking me over 20 hours for me to reach the credits. However, the game might be too big, and I don't mean too big as in there's too much empty space or the pacing is bad, but there, 
that there is so much to do that the game oversaturates you. At almost any given moment, you can choose to do any number of side missions, including, but not limited to, assassination contracts, delivering mail or liberating a part of one of the cities, doing something on the boat, collecting almanac pages, feathers or trinkets, doing chores around your homestead, finding fast travel locations, searching for treasure, and hunting. There's so much stuff to do during a regular playthrough of the game that you won't even find out about what all the icons on your map mean. I was in the 10th chapter of the story before I realized that the trinkets I'd been collecting were for a side quest to unlock something, and I didn't realize until the final chapter that I could train my assassin recruits by sending them on missions, missions like in Brotherhood and Revelations. It's hard to really penalize a game for having a lot of content, but when the game splits your focus and makes part of the experience of playing it creating a checklist of things to do, it's not hard to think that something is wrong. Not to mention that most of the game's menus and maps are more difficult to navigate than they really should be at this point. Despite this review pointing out and focusing on a lot of the game's flaws, I did honestly have a ton of fun with Assassin's Creed 3. There are reasons I've become such a big fan of the series, and this game was one of my most anticipated of the year, and I'm not disappointed. Not at all. Assassin's Creed 3 is a worthy addition to the series, streamlining a lot of the basic mechanics and adding a lot of new ones like sailing that are incredible to play. Though not quite as polished and groundbreaking as some of us might have been expecting, there's no way that AC3 was ever going to be a bad game, and in no way is it one. I still recommend Assassin's Creed 3 to any fan of the series, and will still look forward to any new developments in the franchise. Assassin's Creed 3 gets an 8.5 out of 10.